Let's talk about this crypto and stock market crash and more specifically why it's happening and how you can benefit the most out of it. Ever since the 2008 financial crisis all the way up to 2019, there was constant economic growth. Most people were able to get a job if they wanted to and most investments returned you money, whether it's real estate, whether it's crypto, whether it's stocks, everything yielded a positive return. Until the market crashed in 2019 due to the lockdowns and the fear that was being spread due to the virus, which then lasted only two months. And after that, the markets recovered. We went back to previous all-time highs and beyond. But now this crash seems different. 2019 one was easily explainable. There's lockdowns, there's fear. Markets are just not doing well all over the world. But now what's going on? What is different? To answer this question, first, you must understand how economic cycles work. At times of economic growth, people borrow more money because it's cheaper to borrow money. Interest rates are low and this money would be implemented into the markets, causing the markets to go up. When cash is abundant and the supply of cash is high, inflation happens and that is something we're experiencing right now. Your dollar becomes worth less than it was before, meaning that everything just becomes more expensive. Now, in order to cool down inflation, the Fed jumps in and hikes or increases interest rates and puts us in an economic slowdown. This leads to less borrowing, meaning market crashes because people want cash and they want to sell their investments, which causes everything to come falling down. And ta-da, inflation is cooled. Once this happens, we can go back to reducing the interest rates and then we're back in economic growth and the cycle continues on. Now I really hope you stuck with me on this because it can get a little bit confusing. Usually this process takes a bit of time to play out but nowadays it has been accelerated and that is because of the information that spreads quicker than ever. People can make informed decisions much quicker than they were able to just 20 years ago. Because if you think about it, when the 2001.com bubble happened, your father and grandfather weren't saying, well, I'm just gonna buy this dip and just dollar cost average because in 10 years, I'm gonna make generational wealth. They just wanted to get out because they saw their investments dropping tremendously. So they just wanted to take what they can before this all crashes down to zero. But nowadays we know that we should buy the dip. We know we should buy when everyone's fearful and essentially buy when there's blood in the streets. But this information wasn't out there and this can accelerate our recovery because if everyone's buying the dip, eventually enough people are gonna buy the dip that it's gonna go back up. Because simply put, the markets go up when more people buy than sell and the markets go down when there are more sellers than buyers. But you might be wondering, what happens if the dip keeps on dipping? Well, I'll tell you. Even though there is daily good news about the crypto space, for example, Manchester United coin pumping after Elon Musk said he was going to buy the team. Now, obviously, Elon was just joking and the coin was a fake coin. So please don't go out there and buy that coin. The macroeconomic condition far outweighs any good news in crypto and it's just slamming the price of crypto every time we try to go up again. Even Michael Burry, who was the main character of the movie The Big Short, has sold everything he has all but one stock. After all, Jerome Powell did mention that a recession is certainly a possibility. Now, what does all that mean when it comes to crypto? Are we going to go up? Are we going to go down? Let's talk about this. Taking a look at coin market cap, the current market cap of the whole crypto space is down to $1.1 trillion. Bitcoin is at 23,350 and Ethereum is sitting at 1,834. And most altcoins are in the red. We have only a few players in the green, but the rest are in the red. So everything essentially is crashing. Guys, real quick, I'm currently editing and this video was filmed two days ago. Now, the price target hit exactly where I predicted two days ago. So just don't be alarmed if you see your charts different than what you see currently on the screen. But the targets were hit, so the principles still apply and you can implement them the next time you want to take a trade. Back to the video. Now, let me tell you why Bitcoin is not looking too good, in my opinion. So take a look at this chart right here. It is the four hour Bitcoin chart and look at the white trend line right here. We broke out of it and now it's a resistance, which is a bearish sign, which signals that we are gonna see further downside now will it stop here will it stop there no one really knows but potentially i see this going down to the next trend line which would be about the 21,500, or even we could do even at twenty thousand dollar bitcoin but with this only time will tell even taking a look at ethereum which is also similar to bitcoin because obviously everything looks like Bitcoin and everything follows Bitcoin. So in an uptrend, we have higher lows and higher highs. But in a downtrend, we have lower highs and lower lows. Take a look at this. This is the weekly chart. So it's a longer term and zoomed out time frame. We have a high, then a lower high, a low and a confirmed lower low. And now it seems like we're getting resisted right here to essentially set a double bottom or we can go further down and make an even lower low and then a lower high and then keep going down. If I even go to the monthly chart and turn off the drawings and just take a look at price action itself, take a look at this. 
We made a high, then a higher high, we made an all-time high at about $4,700, then we went down, and now we're getting resisted by this resistance area at around $1,700 all the way to $2,200. So this is also a critical area to watch out for. And all that is with the news of the merge coming out next month. Now, if we're not able to break this out right now because of all the hype that's around the merge, once the merge launches, I see this going further down. And since the merge date is almost aligned with the Federal Reserve meeting date, this could be a recipe for disaster and we can see everything just come crashing downwards. But I don't want to sound too pessimistic, but I'm trying to play it as safe as possible. Now, above all, I'm sure you want to know how do we know if the bottom is in or even if the top is in? So in this case, we're looking out for the bottom. Now let's reverse engineer it. If you think about how we could have determined the top before everything came crashing down, we could just look at the people around us. Everyone was talking about crypto. Everyone was investing into crypto, into Dogecoin, into Shiba, into everything. This should be a top signal for us. I'll show you another funny tweet that also was a top signal. Starting a weekly Bitcoin dinner with my girlfriends who are new Bitcoin investors. Welcome them to Team Orange. So this was tweeted on November 11 of 2021. Now, if you take a look at the Bitcoin chart, November 11 of 2021, which is right there where the price of Bitcoin was around... $65,000, which is almost the all-time high. So this would have been our top signal. Obviously, this is a joke, but if you really think about it, this is how tops are determined. Now, bottoms are harder to be determined. When you see not many people talking about crypto anymore, your family not bringing crypto up or your family telling you that crypto is crashing, then you might want to start buying and this is what I am going to be doing. So plan of action, what should you be doing? Now, personally, I cannot give you financial advice, but I can tell you what I am doing. Full disclosure, I have sold most of my crypto positions and I barely hold any cryptos anymore. And the reason for that is the Fed meeting coming up in September combined with the ETH merge that's coming up, I think this is a recipe for disaster and it's not going to be a good thing. Also, the Federal Reserve has hinted that they are going to be increasing rates as well, which is also bad for markets. So for now, I'm just going to stay away from the market until I have confirmation that we are going to go back up. Now, if you're someone who has a job and you have a stable income and you have a longer term time horizon, five or even 10 years, I suggest you keep dollar cost averaging, whether the market is up, whether the market is down, just set the time frame where you want to buy every week, every two weeks, every month, and a certain amount you want to invest and stick to it. And eventually five years from now or 10 years from now, you can potentially make generational wealth depending on how much you invest, or you're just going to make a profit, which would be awesome versus keeping it in the bank account where inflation is a essentially eating it. But personally, I'm out of the market and I'm going to look for lower prices for me to buy. Am I going to wait for 10K Bitcoin? I don't think so because a lot of people were calling for $10,000 Bitcoin. And when this happens, I tend to go against the grain and just invest at 20K or 18K or let's say 15K, depending on how low we can go. No one can really determine this, but I want you guys to stay cautious and never follow the mainstream narrative and follow the news on how you should invest. Make sure you come up with your own decisions, take a look at the charts, educate yourself properly to know how to read the charts or at least for at the bare minimum, just understand overall market sentiment, when you should enter the market, when you should exit, when you should take profits. And I am sure that you will come out golden and you will be in profit.